Well, 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 the Chiefs just won their preseason finale at Arrowhead against the Cleveland Browns, and while the W doesn't matter, I think several players won the day, making enough of an impression that their spots could very well be written in ink on the Chiefs' 53-man roster. So let's talk about it, but first, how about those Chiefs? All right, first up, Andy Reid reported there were several injuries, but none of them were serious, which is one of the biggest Ws you can have in a preseason game. Coach said that Leo Chanel had a hit pointer on the fumble recovery, and hopefully that is indeed minor. Linebacker Cole Christensen hurt his ribs. Cornell Powell is dealing with a hamstring issue. Wanye Morris has a slight shoulder issue. Cam Jones and Fatu Kazi both have a concussion, and while injuries are never ideal, it doesn't look like any of these will affect anyone for a long duration of time. Next up, defensive tackle Turk Wharton and running back Isaiah Pacheco did play some limited snaps in today's game for the first time all preseason to help knock some of the rust off before the start of the regular season, and it looks like they both handled things well, which is great news. And since we're on the subject of injuries, Big Red also mentioned that Kadarius Tony could possibly return to practice as early as next week. Quote, we'll just See, we are taking that day by day, but he's doing great right now. Andy Reid also mentioned that cornerback Nick Jones is doing well in his recovery with the fractured fingers, noting that he was able to avoid surgery, which is a plus. And I noted both of these guys because they could play a role in how the Chiefs 53-man roster shakes up. If neither have to go to short-term IR after cutdowns, this will affect, in theory, how many of each position group the team decides to keep. But more on that later, because from here, I want to get into the highlights from the game and then note some standout players that may have made things pretty tough on the coaches when it comes to roster cutdowns on Tuesday. First up, early on, Shane Buchel seemed to struggle a bit, and here he targeted Justin Ross on this rollout to the left, and former chief safety, of all people, Juan Thornhill, ended up picking Shane Buchel off and taking it back to the house for six. And initially, I didn't realize it was Juan Thornhill. So when I saw this player doing the tomahawk chop as his end zone celebration, I was like, hey, hell no. But once I realized it was Juan Thornhill, I thought, you know what? He gets a pass. Just this once. Shortly after this, Buchel targeted Cornell Powell here on this play, and Powell actually couldn't hang on to the ball, which weirdly got popped up into the air, into the hands of an awaiting DB in the Brown secondary. So... I put this mistake on Cornell Powell rather than Shane Buchel. Deshaun Watson then threw a pretty nice touchdown pass here with safety Mike Edwards in coverage, which was helped greatly by the fact that the INT gave the Browns great field position. And then we are still in the first quarter when Deshaun Watson gets flushed from the pocket as the Chiefs lose containment. And he hit Amari Cooper deep down the left sideline that set up another Browns touchdown, putting them up 22 to three. And while things were looking very rough, to say the least early on, it's worth noting that the Browns played a lot of their starters early. I think almost all ones, and I think that influenced the jump in the score very early on in this game, because once they pulled their starters, things definitely started to change. Anyway, on the next drive, running back LaMichael Pirine had a great run on the outside for a first down and more, uh, which wasn't his only splash play, because shortly after that, he caught this short pass from Buchel near the 20-yard line, taking it up to the three as he leaped out of bounds, which helped set up this fire Justin Ross, high-pointed touchdown on the left side as he was left one-on-one. -on -one. And honestly, this is how I see the Chiefs utilizing Ross a bit this season. A valuable red zone target. He's six foot four, especially with tight end Jody Fortson out for the season on IR. And I will say this, Justin Ross had multiple targets in this game. I think it was six total, but multiple of those throws were thrown into the dirt at his feet, like not catchable at all, or resulted in that interception that I don't really think was his fault. I'm not sure Buchel ever should have thrown it there. However, Ross did make the most of his limited catchable targets, catching two of those six for 12 yards and that high-pointed touchdown. And while he didn't have insane stats or anything like that, I think he looked good enough to make the 53-man roster. It's also worth noting that during the game, Chiefs GM Brett Veach was speaking in the booth with the commentators and said, quote, we're certainly expecting big things from Justin Ross this year, which only further confirms to me that Justin Ross is making the roster. And then later in the second quarter, Shane Buchel left the game going eight of 17 for 89 yards, one touchdown and two interceptions. And the question is, did he do enough to earn that QB two spot? Well, my personal opinion on that is, how about new? Next up was Blaine Gabbert coming in and connecting with Amir Smith-Marset for a nice gain on a key third down and hit him again deep down the left sideline to get them within scoring range. More on Amir Smith-Marset, AKA 
ISM in a moment because we got to bring the focus back to running back LaMichael P. Ryan, who on third and 15 caught this check down from Blaine Gabbert, making a great move, puts a hand down, but stays up, showing great balance, shedding another tackle as he flew into the end zone. An incredible play from P. Ryan that I think inked him into the 53-man roster. I'm going to go ahead and say it, put him on there. And yes, I do think that means Daneric Prince may have found himself not making the cut. However, hopefully he clears waivers and can do some more growing and developing on the Chiefs practice squad because I do think he certainly has potential. More on him near the end of this video though. And then defensive tackle Charles Aminahue had an awesome sack here just prior to halftime and he did play longer than I thought he would, but it makes complete sense considering he's gonna be suspended for the first six weeks of the regular season. So why not give him as many reps as possible before he goes on like a six week vacation? And just when you thought the Chiefs were bringing it back to a close game, there was some miscommunication here between Blaine Gabbert and tight end Matt Bushman just prior to halftime, and the Browns once again picked the ball off and took it to the house for the second pick six of the day. And while I'm not sure whose fault exactly it was, uh, it did look like Gabbert was off target here, throwing it slightly behind him, which resulted in a pick six from Buchel, as well as Gabbert here on this play. Wide receiver Rasheed Rice had a couple of rough plays as well today, dropping two passes that I can recall, once on a short pass for a would-be first down, and then again on a deep ball that would have resulted in a walk-in touchdown on third down with Gabbert reading the blitz and giving Rice a great shot, which sadly resulted in Rice's fourth drop in three preseason games. And while I'm not overly concerned here like some, I do hope Rice gets these drops under control here sooner uh, rather than later. I mean, Jamar Chase dropped four passes, for example, during his rookie preseason as well. So I'm not gonna worry about it too much. And no, I'm not necessarily saying Rasheed Rice is gonna end up being as great as Jamar Chase or anything like that, but it's worth not overreacting over dropped passes in a glorified, televised scrimmage. Andy Reid didn't seem too concerned about them either. He simply said, Rice will be all right. He's just gotta keep working through it. And while Rice did have some tough drops, he had a great catch and run here in the third quarter for a first down up the right sideline, ending things on a much more positive note for him at least, and this momentum from Rice helped the Chiefs keep the drive alive and set up an awesome 43-yard touchdown pass to Amir Smith-Marset, who made a very strong case today, catching four passes for 101 Dalmatians, Go get him, Thunder. catching four passes for 101 yards and that lone touchdown, and when asked after the game who ISM thinks he is after a preseason performance like this, or his total preseason performance over the last three games, he replied saying, One of the baddest motherfuckers in, in the league. That's, how, that's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> you gotta admire his confidence there. Now, while he did ball out and I think his stock did rise a bit in this game, I'm still unsure if it was enough of a rise to earn a spot on this competitive roster in the wide receiver room, which makes me sad here because I think ISM played well enough that if he does not make the roster, he is not gonna clear waivers and will sadly find himself on another team. But more on that later, because shortly after this ISM touchdown, the Chiefs found themselves trailing by six points, 23 to 29, and DiCaprio Boodle came up with a big INT that gave the Chiefs the ball back with great field position, and then Daneric Prince took the ball up the left sideline on this run here for 15 or so yards that helped Chris O connect with tight end Matt Bushman on a scramble to the left, for six points, AKA a touchdown, which gave the Chiefs their first lead of the day since they went up three to nothing early in the first quarter. And shortly after this, Chris Ola Dokin, Ola Dukan, Oleala Chris O had this insane Mahomes-like play where he scrambled left, then switched directions, going back to the right, and on a long scramble drill connected with Ty Fry Fogel on third and 10 to keep the drive going. And while the Browns ended up getting the ball back and going up two points after a field goal, the Chiefs drove back down the field thanks to another Ty fry frog legs catch and in the end the Browns couldn't make it happen missing a field goal that was tipped by Phil Hoskins and the Chiefs come away with a preseason W and while the win or loss doesn't matter I'm sure the fans at Arrowhead enjoyed the team getting the dub and this officially wraps up the Chiefs preseason which now turns the focus onto cutting the roster down from around 90 I think it's 91 with one exemption uh, to 53 on Tuesday and from here Big Red said that Brett Veach will get with his guys in the morning so Sunday morning, coaches will grade the tape and give their final evaluation 
evaluation of the guys playing, and then Veach and company will shake it all up and come out with the best group they think can help them win games this season. And that's where I want to weigh in on a few of these position groups, at least from my perspective, though I mentioned a couple of them earlier in this video. I think LaMichael Pirine has actually done enough to earn that RB4 spot right now over Daenerys Prince, with the only thing stopping that from happening being Dave Tobe declaring Prince as their starting kick returner. But I don't know. I didn't see anything out there from Prince on any of these kick returns from any preseason game that made him stand out much more than anybody else. And I think he could likely clear waivers and slow cook on the Chiefs practice squad. So maybe he doesn't make it develops there. We see him in a bigger role next season, or if injuries happen, he finds himself getting elevated. The next position group I have is quarterback Blaine Gabbert being quarterback two with Shane Buchel being QB three. While it was close heading into the game, I think Gabbert showed why he's the veteran and put together a better body of work than Buchel, who really seemed to struggle out there early on. And remember, Gabbert's been on the team for like six months. Buchel is going into his third season. Though I do think Buchel put some nice things together near the second half of his total play playtime. So if the Chiefs ended up going Buchel, QB2 over Gabbert, totally fine. But right now I do think Gabbert has the edge, at least in my opinion. I also think the wide receiver seven spot is clearly Justin Ross. He's been playing on special teams, has shown he can create separation on offense, has broken tackles after the catch, and even high pointed that ball today in the end zone. In fact, if it wasn't for a slight miscue in preseason game two, I think with Blaine Gabbert, Justin Ross would have scored a touchdown in all three preseason games. And I get the fact that Amir Smith-Marset played a great game and also had a nice preseason, but most of that was done against a third or fourth team defense. So as of right now, I'm rolling with Justin Ross over Amir Smith-Marset. And some people are saying, well, a surprise cut could be Justin Watson and both Justin Ross and Amir Smith-Marset make the roster. I just don't have that happening at this point in time. Justin Watson has basically been rolling with the first team offense. And uh, I think he's definitely gonna make this roster. I'm really sorry. Anyway, as far as the young defensive backs go with Andy Reid announcing that Nick Jones doesn't need surgery, I think he will be the guy that ends up making this over players like Echo Boydo, DiCaprio Boodle, and or Khalif Halassi. Though, if the Chiefs went with six corners instead of five, I could see maybe one of these guys making it, but that talk's gonna be for another day soon as I give my last 53-man roster projection before cutdowns happen on Tuesday. And with all that being said, where do you guys personally have things going right now with some of these close position battles. Do you think anyone did enough today to lock in a spot like I did, or do you disagree? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below, and until next time, let's go. Let's freaking go. How about those?